This week, the Ironman Zurich, Switzerland. Ronnie Schildknecht chasing his ambition of six wins in a row. Meet Dave Olaski, Ironman pioneer. Iron Mouth, Chris McCormack talks his way to his first championship title. Zurich, situated in the north of Switzerland, is a tourism magnet, mild summer weather, historical sites, the River Lamat and Lake Zurich draw people from around the globe to the city, including thousands of Ironman athletes. 226 kilometers in and around Lake Zurich, this is the Ironman Zurich Switzerland, featuring a unique Australian exit over a small island on the swim, a spectacular bike course with testing climbs christened Heartbreak Hill and the Beast, and a four-loop marathon course along the lake. Swiss athletes have dominated in Zurich, like Ronnie Schilknecht, who is writing himself into the history books. My dream was just to win, and now I have five titles, and naturally I want a sixth. Ronnie knows the course well. It is his training ground, the place where he started his career in triathlon. This is home for me. 15 years ago, I raced the Zurich Triathlon as a junior. I came second last. I saw Ironman Hawaii on TV and have been fascinated with the long distance race ever since. Ronnie Schilknecht has lined up with the world's best in Hawaii twice and crossed the line fourth in 2008, but he struggles in the heat and humidity on the Big Island. The weather conditions are made for me, not too hot. This is not my thing. A top field of pros will be lining up alongside him on race day, hoping to dethrone him off the top step of the podium. Tomorrow's result isn't a foregone conclusion. Tomorrow will be tight, which gives the race more substance, and I look forward to that. Ironman Zurich features a unique participant, Dave Olowski, a 57-year-old ex-policeman from the US, a man who spans the Ironman generations. Yeah, he was one of the original participants in the Ironman event when it started in Hawaii in 1978. I took third place in it. Dave was stationed as a Marine in Hawaii in the late 70s. At the age of 22, he was part of something that nobody had ever done before. When we did this event in 1978, it wasn't a race, it was a personal challenge. Nobody knew in 1978 that this was physically possible. They proved it possible. Dave crossed the line in third. 35 years later, Dave's bike may have changed, but his hunger has stayed. My new goal is to try and do every Ironman around the world. Iron Weekend. The athletes gather and mingle at the Landivisa on the shores of Lake Zurich. Carbo loading, fine tuning their bikes and equipment, and meeting fellow members of the Ironman family from all over the world. Zurich, dominated by Ronnie Schilknecht, who has clocked up five consecutive wins, but Ronnie isn't the only one with a home advantage. This is the, the Ironman Switzerland. Yeah, it's Ironman Switzerland. The, the and a home race is always the main reason why I'm here. The competition will be strong with Matthias and Van Berkel. Rookie Jan van Berkel, missing out on the Olympics, refocused and has given Ironman Zurich his full attention. Uh, the defending champion Ronnie and uh, Matthias has been splitting some very decent, uh, very fast uh, bike splits. Matthias Hecht is looking to break Ronnie's winning streak. Ronnie is amongst the best in the world, and if I can be better than him, then I know I can mix it with the best. Ronnie is not blind to the threats posed by his fellow countrymen. I know fully that he will give his everything to win, which means I have to give my everything. This makes it exciting. In the women's field, Switzerland's Simona Brentley is the favorite, but she knows she has some very tough competition. I like tough competition. It motivates and changes the race. You can't race your own race. You have to be strategic, and it's great when there are big names and you are the favorite. Hungarian Erika Zomo finished second at Ironman Austria. She's tired of second place. You know, of course, I always want to win, but you know, it's um, 
In these days, it's difficult to win an Ironman because so many good girls, and uh, you know, it's so many things has to be perfect, and it's difficult to put a perfect day together. Race day dawns, a moody morning with rain threatening. Ironman Zurich doesn't use transition bags, so the anxious athletes prepare their gear carefully. It's going to be wet and cool, so I have to be a bit smart, um, but I will be. Bella Baylor's 15-time Ironman champion took a maternity break, but Bella is back. Yes, you can call it a comeback, yeah. <laughs> This is my first Ironman, so it's very emotional for me. Our first Ironman together. The sport brought us together, now we're doing one together. The pre-race routines are now habit. I've done this race already so many times. I'm now used to this. It's, it's like my lounge. Prep in transition is critical, and with the nervous tension that comes with it, all seems very serious. Anything can happen, and Dave recognizes the feelings of reaching into the unknown. I didn't sleep well last night. Actually, I didn't sleep at all. <laughs> so it's going to be a long, long day here. I kind of anticipated, uh, you know, some wet weather, so I took my brake pads last night, and I had a, or yesterday, and I had a file, and I filed them down to roughen them up. Ironman is a fast-growing sport, yet for some, Ironman appears a healthy addiction, never getting enough. Uh, Switzerland is my 15th of the year. 86 uh, until last week in Frankfurt. This is going to be my 87 if I finish. Shortly before 7 a.m., the thousands of athletes gather in apparent chaos at the public beach area at the Mutenkai. The water temperature is a cool 20.8 degrees. Ronnie Schilknecht chats through the swim course with his fellow pros. The swim is not his best discipline. There are stronger swimmers in the field. His time to shine will be later. It's a two-loop swim course with the unique feature of the Australian exit after 1.8K out and over a small island. And then 3.8K later, Ironman Zurich boasts probably the shortest run from the swim exit to transition to the waiting bikes. Like a Swiss clock, the horn sounds exactly at 7 a.m., sending the mass of 1,700 athletes into Lake Zurich, jostling for position and clear water over the first few hundred meters. The 16th Ironman Zurich Switzerland is a go. Quickly, a lead group of five establish themselves and pull away. The lead group features three Swiss athletes, Manuel Kuhn, Jan van Berkel, and Matthias Hecht. Manuel Kuhn sets the pace, slicing through the water at an average speed of 1 minute 18 per 100 meters. Jan van Berkel is right on his toes, enjoying the only opportunity to draft. 1.8K into the swim, and only 11 seconds separate the top five as they exit and quickly cross the tiny island providing an excellent opportunity for spectators to get a close look at the race. Van Berkel seems to be attached to Kuhn. The pros are into their rhythm, while the rest of the field thrash their way through each other and the 3,800 meters. Known for her swim, Swiss favorite Simona Brantley leads the women's pro field. Debutant Carla Stumpfli is enjoying her strongest discipline while the rest trail. It's still early in the race, with a bike and run still to come. On the second loop, Kuhn and Van Berkel steal away from the leading group. Ronnie Schilknecht is nowhere to be seen, but no one is expecting a fast swim from him. Kuhn exits the water with a seemingly slow 49-22 swim split and rushes into T1, closely followed by rookie Van Berkel, making his attacking intentions clear early on. A fast transition ensures owning the road. As Kuhn exits, Swiss favorite Hecht enters, 42 seconds adrift. Simona Brentley is the first woman out the water, producing a brilliant swim. The chase is on for the woman. As Carla Stampfli exits transition, so does age grouper Hanneke de Boer from the Netherlands. She produced a lightning fast transition and races away on the bike. Way down the field, Ronnie Schoknecht puts the swim behind him and races into transition. He wastes no time and is off onto the bike in only a minute. Schoknecht is on the hunt for a sixth title. Unique to Ironman Zurich, transition bags aren't used and transition looks more like a campsite than a staging point for 226 kilometers of swim, bike and run. The age group amateurs leave transition one by one, among them Dave Olowski. Everybody was fighting their way to just get there, so get to the finish, so 
Uh, what do you do? You just go. The weather's getting better. It looks great out here. So I'm looking forward to the ride now. The Ironman Zurich, Switzerland starts flat and fast along the shores of the lake and through the city of Zurich. After a gentle climb and a long descent, the first real challenge awaits the athletes. A four kilometer climb with gradients of 5% and more, but with a fast descent as reward. 85 kilometers into the bike, the one kilometer 8% gradient climb tests the athlete's fitness, both physical and mental. Manuel Kuhn left transition first and leads Ironman Zurich. Chasing him is Jan van Berkel, the newcomer, giving his all in second place. These tactics could prove costly for someone accustomed to standard distance draft legal racing, as van Berkel is inexperienced over the long distance. Both hope to gain some time over the known cyclists giving chase behind them. Matthias Hecht is in second place and pushing the pace. After 35 kilometers, he passed early leader Manuel Kuhn, who had already been relegated to second by Jan van Berkel. Having finished third in 2011 and lying second now, Hecht is riding strong and hoping to capitalize on his good swim and stay in front of the chasing defending champion Schildknecht. Schildknecht shows his class on the bike and knowing he can't let the others get away, he powers through the early stages averaging 42.23 kilometers an hour. He knows that he has to race aggressively and to constantly be on the attack till he's in front. Simona Brentley quickly rode to the front and took the lead after passing De Boer and Stampfli. Another strong contender, Regula Rohrbach, is flying on the bike. But with 63k done, she still has 1 minute 31 to catch Brentley. The heavy grey morning clouds made true their promise and the temperature dropped with the rain and the hail. This, however, didn't sway the spectators nor the athletes. This is a day for Iron Man. No excuses. Dave Olowski is showing his iron will. I should have never said about the weather, huh? Van Berkel is still racing out front, leading Ironman Zurich on debut, but he has Hecht breathing down his neck. Up Heartbreak Hill, Van Berkel shows his talents on the bike, soaking up the atmosphere and energy from the thousands of spectators gathered to support. Van Berkel has no way of knowing the damage being done behind him by the five-time winner, Schildknecht, hunting his sixth title. After 85 kilometers, Schildknecht was in third, closing in on Hecht. After 125 kilometers, Hecht is caught and passed. Ronnie Schulknecht now in second, focusing on the job ahead. Only a few kilometers before the end of the 180 kilometer bike course, Van Berkel had to succumb. Ronnie Schulknecht now leads. Simona Brentley is climbing and trying to control the race from the front, as she has done since the 35 kilometer mark on the bike. Behind her in second place, Regula Rohrbach showing off her bike skills and keeping the lead interesting in the ladies race. Only two minutes behind Brentley. Ironman is special in that age groupers get to race the same race as the best pros in the world. One such person is original Ironman Dave Olowski, who is happy to be dry again after the rain and hail. I've never had a mechanical issue in a race before. Mechanical assistance is allowed from the official bike doctor, which is fortunate for Dave. He's grateful, but has lost valuable time, which he could need later in the marathon to beat the 16-hour cutoff. After the break, Schilknecht is first off the bike, but will he be first for the sixth time? Can Brantley hold off Erika Zomo on the marathon? Ronnie Schildknecht made a sensational recovery after his expected slow swim, and after 180k on the bike, he has raced off into the lead with an almost seven-minute cushion. 
He showed his prowess on the bike by taking more time out of the chases on the climb up and the descent down Heartbreak Hill. Further aiding his dream of a sixth win, he has a whirlwind transition, wasting no time. And after mere 124, he was on the marathon course. Van Berkel dismounted in second, and Matthijs Hest in third, more than 10 minutes 20 adrift of Schilknecht and his hopes of a win in Zurich. Simona Brentley still leads, but her margin is a mere two minutes over the other women, Rohrbach, Bayliss and Somor, also chasing the podium positions. The race is far from over. Dave is fed up with technology. Even with all the mechanical and technical advances over the past 35 years, he still suffered the frustration of a broken bike. And the time it lost him will be weighing heavily on his mind with every step of the marathon. In the front of the men's race, Ronnie Schilknecht shows his five-time Ironman Zurich champion class. With a more than 10-minute lead, he's essentially in a race against himself. Ironman rookie Jan van Berkel is defying the odds and surprising the experts with his strong, confident race, holding on to second. Matthias Hecht is fighting in third position. He's punctured before Heartbreak Hill and over the last kilometers of the bike certainly didn't help his cause. Shortly after the woman exited T2, Erika Tomo passed Swiss favorite Simona Brentley and is leading by a mere 13 seconds. Tomo, only two weeks previously finished second in a very hot race in Ironman Austria. Brentley is not happy in second. Did she do too much on the bike and leave her legs on Heartbreak Hill? A quarter of the way into the marathon, and Bella Bayless passes Brantley chasing Tomo in front. A second in Lanzarote earlier this year shows her comeback is strong. Australian Nikki Butterfield now moves into third position. Most of the 1,700 strong field of age groupers have completed two of the three disciplines and now fight the toughest challenge of all, the marathon. While many chase their personal best time, for all, a finish is a win. For Dave, due to health problems and a left knee injury which plagues his run, the marathon is pure survival. I'll get to the finish. Okay. Just having a little trouble on this. <laughs> Jan van Berkel seems to be the star of the rookie show today. He is still in second position, but this seems not enough for him. He ran the first loop nearly as fast as Ronnie Schilknecht and extended his lead over Matthias Hecht. Ronnie Schilknecht is running the final lap of four. The lead margin over his chases suggests perhaps it will be an easy win for the Swiss champion, but there is no such thing as an easy win. Finishing a strong run, Ronnie can enjoy the last few meters. He will now claim his sixth Ironman Zurich Switzerland win in a row. The rain blessing his victory celebrations. The crowds explode in ecstasy as they share in this historic moment. Jan van Berkel dances the dance of a winner towards the finish line. He takes second, but on debut and behind a champion like Schilknecht, it's as good as a win for van Berkel. Ironman has a new rising star to watch. Third on the podium is Matthias Hecht. It's an all-Swiss podium for the 16th Ironman Zurich Switzerland. On the bike, I was having a sweet day. You know, the day went perfectly. I felt good from the start. I could feel on the run that maybe I biked a bit too hard, but luckily my lead was big enough and then it was enough. I'm, I'm overjoyed. Erika Tomor floated onto the blue carpet to claim her first Ironman title in four years. A good bike and her strong running crowned her 2012 champion of Zurich. Bella Bayless fought hard on the bike and on the marathon to claim the second step of the podium. Another great result in her comeback year. Simona Brantley ran her way into third position. I'm very happy. Second place is, is very good, but it was not easy. It was a, it was a hard day. In the last four years, I, I couldn't win an Ironman race. <laughs> I was many times close second, and I felt like maybe it's my fault. I'm not giving all my best. But then I was pushing, pushing, and luckily I felt, OK, today I can, I can win it.
There's a saying in Iron Man, a finish is a win. Anything is possible on a day of swim, bike and run, over 226 kilometers. At each finisher, regardless of how the day played out, savors those magic moments down the blue carpet. While many have already finished, Dave is still out on the course at his own pace, taking it easy on his knees. But Dave knows the clock is ticking. One by one, the athletes arrive to claim their medals. It gets lonely out on the course for Dave. In fact, there's almost nobody left behind him. Now it may be time to rush. You know, I lost 45 minutes on the bike, waiting for a mechanic. And as you see, I need every minute I can, I can get out here. <laughs> He's there in about two minutes, so we're waiting for him. He's the Iron Man, it was a tough day. Dave knows what it feels like to be out on his own, alone on the track. When he first did the Ironman in 1978, there were 12 finishers. Now there are almost 1,700, and Dave is one of them. The feeling is the same. I think the big difference is, is there is no difference. It's, it's an Ironman, it was an Ironman back then. There's still the pain and the struggles that you go through and the mental toughness you have to get through in the day. And like I say, when I tell the people, you know, don't give up, just, you know, keep the feet moving forward. I practice what I preach, so <laughs> here I am. <laughs> Iron Man 70.3 Rhode Island was dominated by Aussie Paul Ambrose, producing the fastest run split of the day. Kriat held on to second, while USA's Mike Kaitso took third. Kate Snow's dominant run prevailed as she went on to win. Canadian Annie Gervais ran her way into second. Thomason Barajwaj passed a fading Griesbauer late in the run to capture the final podium position. Hawaii has a special attraction for Chris McCormack. In 2002, he announced his intention to win on debut and got smashed in the lava fields of Hawaii. Iron Man really teaches you a depth of character, and Kona in particular is a, is a race that is, is just absolutely brutal. You can't bluff your way through Kona. McCormack learned from his mistakes, and finally, he thought he was ready and took on the challenge. 2006, Myself and Norman Stadler had a, an amazing war and, and I honestly thought I was going to win that race and, and, and I, can, I can say it now, looking back, it was probably one of my best performances in Kona, even though I was beaten that day. Between 06 and 07, Macca became infamous for his tactics off the course and his temper. In 07 I went on a rampage of racing, I, I called them out at every opportunity, I picked fights with them, I sent them emails, I, I came to races and heckled them on the sidelines. and. And my wife actually pulled me aside and said, you, you really need to calm down. So McCormack put all the pressure on himself in 2007. On the bike, McCormack took it easy in the chase pack, but surprisingly managed to pass his biggest opponent from the previous year, Norman Studler, who later dropped out of the race. Ten minutes after the leader, American Chris Lieto, McCormack entered transition. He was feeling confident, knowing he was the stronger runner. Just before the energy lab, he passed Lieto and moved into first position. Craig Alexander moved into second and chased his fellow Australian. Once he entered the town of Kalua Kona, McCormack knew he could hold on for the finish. Down Alihi Drive on his way to the finish line, McCormack started his victory celebrations, proud to prove he would have the last laugh. To win your first title at an event that I watched as a 12 year old and I told my parents and my brothers in 1987 that I was going to be the Hawaiian Ironman champion and to turn around 20 years later and to run down Alihi Drive and for that to come true, uh, it's nothing in, nothing's better than that. Uh, it's still, a, still one of the greatest moments of my life. Join us next week for highlights of the Ironman UK.
the English edition of Ironman racing happening in Bolton, possibly one of the toughest race courses in Ironman. Olympic medal winner Rebecca Romero talks to us about tackling her first Ironman. And find out more about Chrissy Wellington's win in Hawaii in 2008.